Hello, 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 Second Glass family. Thank you for tuning in for Cellar Chats. Uh, pretty amazing Cellar Chats this week and a great lineup of wines. I have a special guest, the one and only Thomas Pastuzak from New York with his wines, Empire State from the Finger Lakes. We are doing all Finger Lakes this week. We're gonna make it short, sweet, and delicious, and I can't wait to get into it. Let's jump into some bubbles. All right, we're starting out with my buddy here at Thomas's Empire State. Blanc de Blanc. Walk me through it, my friend. Very cool. Yeah, we're doing a little, uh, you said short, sweet, and delicious, but let's, let's start with short, dry, and delicious. I like that. I uh, like because, that. Because, in fact, the focus is all dry wines. Um, you know, as you all know, but maybe not uh, for folks out on the other side of the video, um, I'm a New Yorker through and through. I grew up in New York City, moved to the Finger Lakes for school originally, and then fell in love with the food and wine world there. And uh, found myself supporting a lot of my friends' wines and wanting to make my own wine at some point, too. So I spent time working at a bunch of different wineries, uh, working the harvest, uh, working in tasting rooms. I wanted to make my own. Cheers, my friends. Cheers, buddy. So, we, 2014 was the first year for Empire State. We only made dry Riesling, and then after a couple of years, realized that a lot of people love dry Riesling, but the history of the Finger Lakes is actually in sparkling wine. The first wines made in the area in the late 1800s were bubbles, and I wanted to be able to make some bubbles. That was actually kind of a, a bit of a hat tip to the origins of sparkling wine in the area. But also keep the price point super affordable. You know, Empire State is all about wines that you can drink on a regular basis every single day, uh, not made, meant to be something that's too uh, expensive or high end or something that's not accessible. So the intention is like keep it fresh, keep it bright. Uh, we work with some remarkable farmers. So, you know, we're young, scrappy guys here behind Empire State. We don't own any uh, vineyard land, we don't own a winery. We share space at a friend's cellar at Red Newt, actually in Hector, which yep. is on the east side of Seneca Lake. Uh, where our pal Kelby Russell, who's a winemaker there, he oversees all the Empire State wines. And indeed, the focus is dry Riesling, in this case, the sparkling. So it's, uh, this actually happens to be 100% Riesling that is dry. Um, and a lot of people think about Riesling, they think you can only make a sweet wine from it, or maybe a dry still wine. But there's a lot of great sparkling Riesling in the world. Um, we're calling this sparkling wine Blanc de Blanc Brut because it's a, it, these are words that more people associate with dry sparkling wine. Uh, so it's the same quality farming and winemaking as you would expect of uh, a quality dry uh, wine on a table wine or a sparkling wine. Uh, we just want to make sure that people know that it's dry and sparkling. Uh, so indeed, it, it is both of those things. You can't taste it right now, but hopefully you'll be tasting it soon. It is dry, bubbles, it is really tasty. Um, I mean, Thomas is, he's joining me, he's in the market this, today with me. We've been tasting these. I've not had this wine out in a while and it is, it's beautiful. It's excellent. It's all the things you want. And this weather is actually perfect. I mean, it's warm out, but it's good weather. It's great weather for drinking bubbles. And I had no idea that the Finger Lakes really was founded on sparkling. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, granted, like the people that were coming over and what they were doing and the climate in that area, particularly at that time, would have been much, much colder than it is now. Sure. Yeah, it's a um, fair point. So. Yeah, it's no surprise that the, you know, the original wineries that were started, yeah, so again, back in the late 1800s, the only, there was no real winemaking in the Finger Lakes, so it's great growing, and then it took the Champagne winemakers sending over their version of a missionary to find new land, to plant a new land on which to make wine, make sparkling wine, and, and a bunch of them made their way into California, a bunch of them made their way upstate, and that's how the, the region sort of became established as a sparkling region. So today, there is sparkling wine made in the Finger Lakes, not just Empire State, a number of great wineries make sparkling wine, um, and a lot of them kind of pursue this champagne style where it's aged for a longer period of time, and the wines uh, take years and years to kind of come to maturity. Um, I think with Empire State, our focus is like, you know what, we want people to drink something fresh and bright. I personally, in, in my own personal life and with friends, drink a lot of bubbles, but it's not all champagne. It's, yeah. you know, very affordable sparkling wines, you know, a Cremant from Burgundy, or Cava from Spain, you know, Prosecco when it's made in a drier style. So those are the style of everyday sparkling wine that I like to drink, that I'm trying to sort of get people who are, who already like those styles of wine, to drink Empire State and kind of get uh, an understanding for what Finger Lakes can do as well. Yeah, no, they should, for sure. Um, again, the first wine for the, the wine flights and today's chats is the Blanc de Blanc from Empire State, and it is 100% Riesling. And we're gonna move into a little more Empire State, the wine that started it all, I believe, yes. Dry Riesling. This is the 2018. So, as we get into this, um, about how many wineries are in the Finger Lakes? About, I think, a little bit north of 140 wineries okay. now. 
which is a, a pretty big shift if you think that in the late 70s, early 80s, there were only about 20 wineries. Um, and then since then, it's really kind of grown. And then it's not just brick and mortar wineries. There are a lot of wineries that are now a former assistant winemaker who started their own project. Or uh, you have someone who comes from outside who got excited about the wines in the area, uh, like Paul Hobbs, for instance, whose yep. family is originally in the area, but Paul makes wine around the world, but most notably in, uh, in California. But now he started a winery there too. So it's a combination of uh, people who have grown up in the area who started wineries or families that have expanded their wineries, but there's also a lot of outside interest now there too. So it's a very exciting time to, to be in the area. Uh, I dig it. All right, yeah. let's jump into this because as you guys can see, I don't know if you saw the bubbles, very, very clear, but this has got a lot more golden color to it. Yeah. Um, and, and Thomas was explaining to me earlier, you know, this wine has always been that way. It kind of appears like maybe it's gained some, some color and depth uh, since being bottled, but it kind of found out that way because 18 was a really kind of atypical year, which led to this very unique bottling of the dry Riesling from Empire State. But damn, is it delicious. Yeah, thanks, man. No, I think, um, Again, I'm a restaurant guy first and foremost before doing anything winery related. And for me, the guest interaction is super important. So going to a table, going to a guest, and them saying, you know, I want a glass of dry white wine. That's what first got me inspired to even do this because I discovered early in my wine career that there's a lot of great dry wine out there that is made from Riesling. People hear Riesling, some people assume sweetness, some people assume Riesling is a style, when in fact it's just a grape, right? It's just like saying Chardonnay or Pinot Grigio. Um, and so I love dry spark, uh, dry Riesling specifically because I could pour a dry Riesling from Australia, I could pour a dry Riesling from Austria or from Alsace for that guest that's like, yeah, I just want an unoaked Chardonnay or I want a glass of Sauvignon Blanc, and I'm like, try this. And they would taste it without knowing what it is, and they're like, this is delicious, it's a dry white wine and it's got a lot of character. And then they would learn that it's Riesling, they're like, I didn't know that you could make Riesling this way. And so for me, that was like very much the gateway for wanting to make this style with Empire State. I will be totally frank, very much inspired by my favorite Austrian and German dry Rieslings, uh, where there's a little bit more of a focus on herbal, mineral, non-fruit characteristics. And of course, Riesling will always give you fruit character because the grape is naturally very versatile, but also gives you great natural fruit character. Um, but you know, wanted it to be more, um, have a little bit more earthy, mushroomy, saline, savory kind of characteristics first and foremost. So 2014 was the first year. We started with three small parcels, uh, all around Seneca Lake, which is the main lake. We now have two parcels on Cayuga Lake, as well as a few more on Seneca. Awesome. We're still a relatively small production winery, given the scope of the Finger Lakes and definitely given the scope of the world of wine. But we've really, you know, grown the dry Riesling production, and it's awesome to see it, you know, make its way, you know, to a number of yeah. different states. And again, Empire State, the whole vision was, we're not a, we didn't start as a winery where we'd have a tasting room where people would come and try the wines at the winery. We want people to discover the Finger Lakes but we want people in different parts of the country to discover Finger Lakes. So being in Wilmington, or last week I was in Los Angeles and San Francisco, you know, I'm gonna go visit some friends in Miami. These are other places that are genuinely interested about what's happening in New York, but they don't get a taste of it because not a lot of the wines from the Finger Lakes make their way out of the Finger Lakes to right. those other places. So for, for us, for Empire State, it's just important to be, we didn't name the winery after any person or at any place. We called it Empire State because it represents New York, yeah. and that's what we want people to get to know and be excited about. Yeah, no, I love it. It's great. I mean, you know, I've been really fortunate. You know, I started with Kellogg Selections in 2019, and we've been selling the wines ever since. I've had, I had them on the retail shelves before, yeah. and, and it does that thing, and, and you know, this is not me like trying to make you feel good or blowing smoke. Like, it does the thing that you want it to do is it gets you an entry into New York State wines, it gets you into a great dry style Riesling at a price point that pretty much everyone can afford mm -hmm. at some given point, especially people that are into wine. So if you enjoy wine for the aspect of the flavor of wine and the experience of wine, I talk about this a lot of times on here because a lot of people drink wine for different reasons. And you know, not everybody drinks wine because they enjoy it, they drink it because it's the, it's the preferred way for them to intake alcohol. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you enjoy wine for the flavor and everything else, you know, there's so much to be had at good price points, but you have to be willing to try things that maybe you didn't think you were gonna like. Yeah. So again, we're gonna move into the last wine real quick. That was Empire State, their dry Riesling. So, so good. Please come out and taste this. And then we're gonna go to a pretty important producer, not the oldest, but very, very, very important to the Finger Lakes. This is Herman J. Wiemer, their 2020 dry Riesling. Um, and we're gonna touch a little bit on this. This was new for, for Kellogg. 
Um, you know, so these are all my wines, obviously, but we're doing these on the flight. And I thought it was really cool to have kind of what I would call, you know, the young and up and coming guys really putting some passion and love into the Finger Lakes. And then a producer that is equally young and pushing the boundaries, but also historically important as far as how mm -hmm. the Finger Lakes is. Totally. Would you agree? No, absolutely. And it's very apropos because uh, Hermann Wiemer, Hermann, you know, is from Germany. Uh, he comes from the sort of OG wine country for Riesling, um, and he saw Great Terroir in the Finger Lakes and was one of the very first, uh, alongside Constantin Franck, to want to push vinifera, meaning Riesling, Cabernet Franc, Chardonnay, the grapes from Europe, at a time when in the Finger Lakes um, everything that was planted was planted to Native American varietals. Um, and then eventually hybrid varietals. And so Hermann was very, very important in the area. He made wine um, at some well-known wineries at the time, and he set off on his own and started his own vineyard in 79. And the focus is on the west side of Seneca Lake and Dundee, focus being on Riesling, um, various different styles, but the portfolio of what the winery does, and you know now Oscar and Fred, uh, Fred Merworth, who's the winemaker, who was Hermann's assistant, he and his buddy Oscar Bink, who is an agronomist, they bought Hermann Wiemer from Hermann in 2007. And they've taken it to an even next level of quality because they have an amazing nursery where they're creating new vines and plant material that they can plant in different parts, not only of the Finger Lakes and the East Coast, but they sell that to yeah, the West Coast. One of the very few nurseries in the U.S. in general, yeah. which, I, you know, it's a conversation never, nobody really talks about, like, where do you get all these plantings and yeah. getting it from Europe with, you know, going through customs and all of the things that go in through that just doesn't make sense. It's not financially viable and it doesn't make sense for the plant material. And there's really only a hand, handful. And it's pretty amazing that one is so close in New York in an area that really deserves more attention in general mm -hmm. and as a whole. Indeed. Um, and I really like how these wines, you know, I find it, it's always important when we're doing these flights that they transition really well. You start really crisp and fresh and lively and just so fun to drink with the Blanc de Blanc from Empire. A little more textural roundness, but still very, very dry. That kind of petroly character that I love about dry Rieslings. And as you were explaining, I didn't know this earlier, I meant to say it, which was, it's a characteristic that you find in places with a lot of sunshine, which makes so much sense. It is a huge telltale characteristic for Australian Riesling, is that petroly character. And then into the Herman J. Wiemer, still dry, but a little more like fruitiness, mm -hmm. a little more breadth on the palate, mm -hmm. um, and just a lovely kind of like showcase of very different styles that are all within the dry category of Riesling, but all from relatively the same area, which is so cool. So, all right, we're going to wrap up real quick. Uh, big thanks to Thomas for uh, agreeing, I conned him into this by the way, to doing this with me. <laughs> uh, the wines are so fun. So this week the flight is Finger Lakes, Empire State Blanc de Blanc. Empire State, Dry Riesling, rounding out that dynamic duo with Hermann J. Wiemer, Dry Riesling. Please come out, have the flights, support your local restaurants, be good, be safe. See you next week.